This is session four of the JSON API topic, and today Anamitra is going to take us through using search terms and stable paging. Hey Tom, thanks. Um, so yeah, as Tom mentioned, today we're going to talk about um, the stable paging as well as search terms. These are two features that we have in the REST JSON API. So I'll start with the stable paging. Now, um, as you can see, like, you know, we have already logged into the API and we're di displaying the JSON for the API metadata, which effectively says, like, you know, kind of lists all the APIs that we have available out of the box uh, with the object structure and the URL and the schema details. But I'll move on from this and let's, uh, take the MXO detail object structure for our stable paging. And um, let's go there for a quick ride. And so if I just go and select MXO detail, I would get around 1900 rows in a demo database that we have in Maximum. But let's not get all the 1900. I'll just start doing a paging. Now everybody almost, I believe, are already by this time familiar with paging. So uh, if I just say paging size is 10, <clears throat> it gives you a list of URLs, gives you in the response info, a page, next page, if you go next page, it lets you go to the next page, moves you back to the previous page. If you click on the previous page link, uh, one thing to note is all in the response info, now, in this one, what is happening behind the scene in the server is every time we're going page back or page front, it actually reselects the Mabo. So it basically fires the select clause in the database, uh, selects the Mabo, and then starts from that index. Like, you know, if it is page number two and the page size is 10, so it's starting from index, say, 10, 10 to 19, right? So, but it actually does fire the select clause again and again. So every page that you're moving back and forth, you're firing the select clause. Now, while that is okay for a very stateless model, but you know, sometimes it is not very beneficial for uh, huge volumes of data loading in the sense that you're, you're sucking up data from Maximo into your uh, client device maybe. So let's say anywhere platform uses uh, a different flavor of paging called stable paging, which kind of addresses exactly that need, wherein the select is not fired at every page request. It is only fired for the first page request, and then uh, the next page and subsequent pages are always loaded from a cached Mabo set in the memory. So it, it scrolls through the Mabo set, but it doesn't go back to the database. So the select is not fired. So that's the key aspect and the key difference between stable paging and the normal paging. So currently what you're seeing is the normal paging. So let's shift gears and go to stable paging. So in here, actually, let me, before I shift gear, I want to just do the OSLC select to show that we were just, let's say selecting Vonum and status. So you kind of know that we're getting data from here. Now we are at page number two, so I'm going to remove that thing and I'm going to start the stable paging. So in, before I move to that, I want to show you so that you will notice the difference. So in the normal paging, you would see that, you know, this is pretty much where the select clause is and the page sizes and the password and user ID, whatever, but it doesn't have anything else. But when we do stable paging, you will see a stable ID being created uh, for to help the paging, to help the caching of the Mabo set. So let's start stable paging right now. So we are at a page size of 10 and I'm going to say ampersand stable paging equals one. What it means is that you're telling the server, hey, I want to start stable paging and I want to select A, B and C three attributes, uh, in this case, Vonam and status by the page size of 10. It's no different than the normal paging syntax, except that you're introducing the new query parameter called stable paging equals one. And I press enter, what you see, you see the exact same result. So apparently there is no difference. But if you scroll down, you would see that along with the next page URL, you also have a stable ID associated with it. What it effectively means is, you know, right now, 
this is where your Mabo set is kind of cached with. So if I go and click on this, I go to the next page, as you see page number two, and I click on the next page, I go to the next page. But one interesting thing is that you don't see any previous page. Do you see? You don't see anything previous page. Why don't you see previous page? Because in stable paging, because of all the memory concerns and all, we have destroyed the pages as they get loaded. Effectively, the moment you have loaded page number three, page number three is destroyed on the server side. So you cannot reload page number three. Neither can you go to page number two. So for example, if I just do a refresh on this page, you would see that it gives you page three has expired. Effectively meaning that, you know, once the data is got, it's gone. So that keeps the server side very lean. It is never really storing tons of Mabos on the server and building up the memory. It is always destroying the Mabos. So you can only do forward scrolling with this table paging. Uh, you cannot go backwards or you cannot even reload the current page. So for us to now go to the next page, what you have to do is that I'll manually just type in four here because I know the cache is still there. It is just that I have made an invalid fetch on the cache. So the cache is still valid and I do page number four and I'm back on the game. I basically can continue on my paging. I can still go on doing next page, go to page number five and everything works fine. Uh, the caveat here is that this makes you sticky to the server. So let's say you have a 10 member cluster and when you logged in, we use sticky session and hence your session is connected to one server out of the 10. But if that server goes down, in a, in a case of normal paging, you can still move back to another server. But in case of stable paging, because the server had cached the Mabo set, you cannot go back to another server, you have to start from the scratch. So stable paging actually is uh, pinning you to one server through the life of the paging. Once your paging is done, you go back to the stateless mode and you're all set again. So just so that everybody understands, stable paging stores the Mabo set, saves you from repeated database access for every page, but it still sticks you to one server. Uh, and if the server goes down, your session is lost and you have to start fresh for the stable paging. That pretty much was in just the stable paging. You know, important thing is that there's no next, no previous page and no current page refresh. So Anamitra, one question mm -hmm. is if I've started a stable paging and I'm on page three of a hundred. Yep. If someone in another application adds a new row that would have ended up on page seven, uh -huh. I won't see that new row. You won't see that new row. That's right. Because it's yes. cached. Yeah, because it's not going to go back to the database again. Okay. Okay. For the for selecting the set, you know, because you know, as it is moving to different Mabos, the Mabos in it might actually cause some other select to get fired from field validation or something else. That's a different thing. You know, so Mabo number 11 getting loaded uh, from asset might load asset meters. So that's a different set. That'll anyway get fired. That's a Mabo loading behavior, but not for the asset Mabo itself. Okay. okay or for the work order Mabo. Okay. Okay. That was that for um, stable paging. We can uh, move to search terms, I guess. Right. Okay. So for search terms, let's, uh, let's take Semex asset. You know, why not? Um, so start with I think I already have the session so um, let's OSLC slash OS slash MX asset so in here I don't want to put a where clause so what is search terms you know first let's start with that thing so search terms is like in a kind of similar to your Google search where you give some terms um, and you search by that those terms so you want to basically put a token like, you know, uh, XP uh, or Windows XP or something. And you want to search on certain fields inside your data structure, inside your object structure, uh, or even out related fields to object structure. You can search on them uh, on that token or on, on a series of tokens. So for example, let's say I want to search because I know in my demo database, I have got few assets that are like, you know, referring to Windows XP as, um, uh, as like, you know, operating system. So IT operating system. So let me search on them and I'll show you exactly how it works. So it's a way of filtering. 
uh, just so that everybody's clear. So it's it's exactly uh, similar to the way of filtering that we do in OSOC where, where you put a where clause and do filtering is similar, but it is only do doing some term based filtering. So when you're doing the term based filtering, you want to say what terms you want to search on. So let's say I want to say search on attributes. So it says search attributes. Uh, let's say I want to say description. That's an easy one to search on. And I want to say my search terms equals, let's say, XP. Basically saying that search on all of asset for the term XP uh, only on limit only to like you know description so let's say we do that thing so what do we get and now uh, just for the sake of it let's do the worst we'll see select equals asset num comma description and I mean your search attributes and search terms mm -hmm. that <coughs> they are case sensitive with one capital they letter. are case sensitive exactly yes. okay. yep these are case sensitive and this is the exact case that needs to be there. Otherwise, the server side would not recognize them. And so what you see is that you see a bunch of XP operating system coming up, right? So all of them are Windows XP for different assets. And um, pretty much that is all it is there. Yep, all of them are XP. But so you just saw this, right? So now let's say I want to uh, make a little bit more. I want to make more terms into it. So I want to add, uh, let's say, office because I know there are some assets that have a description with the word office in it. So it's an or clause going to happen right now. So it's going to not only give me assets with XP, it's also going to give me assets with office in them. Okay, so it's really an or and if I go down right now, actually you know what Microsoft Office has, well Microsoft Office actually has a office already, but I think there are certain other assets all in one office printer all in one office printer. That's another one which is not an XP, but has the word office in it. So as you can understand, it's an R. Um, so that's what happened. And now you kind of saw that with one attribute, as in a search attribute, I was able to search with multiple terms. But let's make it more matrix and let's say add external attributes. So dependent ones, let's say related ones. Let's say I go to location, which is a relationship name, dot description so what effectively it is doing it's trying to go and search okay let me type did I type the name right description yep so <coughs> it's just searching as an or for XP in description and location description or office in description or location description so it's really a big or <coughs> between so it's also searching asset description too. It's searching asset description for the terms XP and office. It's searching location description for the terms XP and office as an R. So if I do this and let's say I just say fetch me location dot description, then um, it should fetch me some more. And you can see in the location it brought in HVAC, this one, so main office. As you can see. This one, in the asset side, we did not have anything of XP or Office, but the location had it. So it actually got me one. It kind of underscores like, you know, how the search is happening. It's like term-based spanning on certain attributes from the object structure as well as related objects. So you can actually expand the scope, and of course you can understand if you the more search attributes you include, more related ones you include, the query on the server side becomes more complicated. So, you know, there is a cost on performance also, but, you know, this is just a convenient way of, like, you know, t doing term-based search. Uh, that's uh, pretty much in just what we can talk about search terms. I hope, I mean, it, the idea is clear. This is mostly kind of mimicking Google search or kind of a text search kind of a model on this ones. Okay. So... When you did a search on a single asset with a single term, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you just did an OSLC where and you did it can like, be mimic. is that the same? It's kind of mimic, but you know, one thing I want to tell, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of exactly the same. Yeah. And it's exactly the same, that, that is right. That is the case, but one thing I want to say that this 
mostly what we use these ones are text search enabled descriptions are mostly in maximum text search enabled because I'm using db2 by text search is not enabled by default but in Oracle and all by default we have text search enabled and db2 people can go and enable it you know so yeah but you know that's that's right you could have mimicked that one to one with just like you know as you said as you OSLC were but the moment you go two and two by two stuff like that then it is become difficult with the OSLC where you cannot really contain that with that thing so that's yeah. where search term comes into handy a lot okay okay that ends today's recording